I did an investing video about, I guess, a week ago, and it was looking at the S&P 500, and it's okay if you don't know what that is, and I think it was the unemployment rates in the U.S., and I was basically overlaying the patterns or the trends to see if there was a correlation, right? And it was relatively simple. And I got a few questions of people going, well, you know, how do I do that? How do I get the data? How do I do that investigation? So I thought I'd do an extension video to that, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper, okay? So one of the things I look at when I'm investing, now this is just what I do, right? I am not gonna give, I'm not one to give investment advice. You know, what you do with your money is your choice, right? But how I analyze it is, if I'm looking at a stock, right? Or a bond or a business, or uh, index fund, whatever it is I'm looking at, one of the things I'm interested to see is, especially because we're in COVID season, I guess you not COVID season, but coronavirus kind of time, is if I had a bought a stock, right, at the start of last year, will it have survived during coronavirus, right? Because people aren't spending anymore, people are saving their money, um, because businesses aren't making money, then they have to lay people off, and it kind of has a snowball effect from there. So I want to know that if I invest in a company, will it survive coronavirus? Well, I can't test that because coronavirus isn't over. But what I can test is similar events to the coronavirus, things like the global financial crisis, the internet bubble, you've got the crash of, I think, 1987, you've got wars, you've got all sorts of major, um, you know, life-changing events. And if these companies were around during that time, I can actually see, did they actually make more money? Did they lose money? Did they actually survive? Did they grow? You know, um, and you can do that with Tableau. So let me show you how you can do it with any stock, right? First, we're going to start with um, the S&P 500. And while I'm downloading this data, I'll explain to you what it is, if you're not too sure. Basically, if you had a kajillion dollars, right, this, this is just a simple explanation, and you invested in it in the top 500 largest companies in the US, you know, Google, Amazon, Apple, you know, all the really, really large ones, and all the way down to 500, right? And if all of them, let's say, made a loss, right, at the end of the trading day or whatever, then if you take the average across that, right, that's the S&P 500, simply put, right, it's not exactly like that, but simply put, and what it's able to do is give us an indicator of how the economy is going as a, as a whole, right, so if I do five years in this, you can see that, you know, in 2015 to 20, what is it, 18, things were going great, there was a little bit of a drop, I don't know what happened, Right. And then you have January 2020 where coronavirus happened and, you know, the economy started to take a dive. Right. So whenever they say, oh, you know, the economy is down or whatever, they're usually referring to S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, some sort of big index. Right. To represent the, com the country as a whole. And this is the data we're interested in. So we're going to go historical data and we're going to grab all this data. Right. And basically today I'm going to show you how to do data blending. And I just filmed a video on that, so stay tuned, and you will see that come up soon. All right, and we're going to download it on a monthly level. I'm not interested in daily. I'm going to go apply. All right, so now the data is refreshed, and we're going to go and download the data. All right, so that's the first one. And you can pick any company you like, right? Let's pick Google. All right, let's... You can pick your own company. You can pick McDonald's or Coca-Cola or, you know, your favorite chocolate. You can pick whatever you like. You know, it's it's more exciting that way. So let's go historical data again. We're going to go maximum, All right? Historical prices and monthly. Apply. Don't forget to hit apply. Otherwise, you'll be downloading the default data. All right? Google. Let's do McDonald's just because I had it yesterday and it was it was freaking sweet. Um, just don't tell my girlfriend. She thought I was out doing groceries. <laughs> She's like, "Why'd you take so long?" It's like, "Ah, yeah, there was a there was a huge line at McDonald's, and you know, don't tell her." <laughs> All right, so McDonald's, Yahoo Finance, and maybe we'll stop there. I don't want to take too many because then this will be a whole video on just downloading data, which we don't want to do. So we go maximum. And we're going to go monthly, and we're going to go apply download. All right, so the screen is going to switch because I'm just going to get everything ready. Um, I don't want you to have to wait while I do that. All right, so stay tuned. All right, I've got those three files and we're going to bring them in. And before we do that, we're going to rename them just because I like to be, you know, 
meet S&P 500, and I suggest you do the same. Some of these codes look really similar. All right, we're going to bring uh, each one in, and we're going to do a data blend. Now, if you're not sure about data blends, I do have a video. Hopefully, it is published by the time you see this, which it should be. I'll probably pu publish it as soon as I finish this video anyway. Um, and we're going to bring the S&P 500 in. Let's just get rid of this for a second. So I'm going to bring in the S&P 500 right, as my first one, and we're going to do a blend on Google. Right, and we're going to blend it using the dates, right? Because that's the common value. And we're going to also do McDonald's, right? And the reason I do I choose S and P five hundred for the left side is just because it has way more data than the rest, right? That's the main reason. Okay, so we got date on date. Close this, and we're done basically. Let's go to sheet one, and we have all our data here ready to go. And before I move forward, again, I'm going to get rid of a lot of these fields, which we don't need, right? So we only want to keep the closing price. So I'm going to hide them. So we're not deleting them, just hiding. Okay. And this is a really good tip. I, I see a lot of people, um, there's a lot of fields that I don't use, and they just keep them there. And it's really easy to pick the wrong field, put it into the viz, and then you have all these errors, and you don't know why, you know? So by just cleaning up, sort of like a sushi chef, slice clean, slice clean, you know? Um, it just eliminates or high, reduces greatly the chance of making a mistake, all right? So Google close, let's go McDonald's close, and let's do S and P close. All right, and we're going to start with the S&P 500. And because I've already done the blend, I don't have to worry about inner join, outer join, and all that kind of stuff, all right? I can just bring in date, and let's maximize this actually. We'll do monthly continuous, so this green part, all right? And we're going to bring in each of the close values. So let's go this first close. Uh, let's do Google close. Oh, hang on, like so. And then McDonald's close. Okay. Now I don't want all this data here, so we're just going to filter that. So I'm going to duplicate this range of dates, and let's just stop it at maybe the year, where does all this data start? So let's say after the year 2000. Okay, there we go. And now what I want, what I'm looking for is every time there was a dip, right, in the S&P 500, which represent the entire economy, what did these companies do? Now, I can't dual access for three of them, so we're going to use measured values instead, right? So let's get rid of this. Let's drop measured values in here for McDonald's. And then, and actually, that's probably a bad example. I can see straight away because um, this is on such a smaller scale of price than this one that it's flattened out all the interesting patterns, right? So instead, we're going to do this undo. We're going to bring McDonald's in here, and we're going to dual access this, right? That way, they're on two different scales, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for Google. So we're going to duplicate this. Right, and we're gonna swap this out for Google. All right, dual access. Okay, and let's put this on a dashboard so we can see everything. All right, so McDonald's and Google. And I'd probably leave them as a vertical one so I can actually spread out the data and see all the interesting patterns. Okay, and maybe a bit more too far. All right. So this is actually one of the analysis I would do. So for example, let's say this one, McDonald's, and the S&P 500 is the orange line. Okay. So let's say I'm interested in this area here. The entire stock market took a dip, right? In 2008, people lost their homes, you know, people lost their jobs, um, companies shutting down, all sorts of terrible things. So the economy was just taking a nosedive, right? During this crisis, McDonald's stock went up. No matter, so it's sort of like that's a good thing. That means that if I invest in it during coronavirus, not that this is financial advice, I could expect to see that um, it would probably survive during a crisis, right? And let's see if that's true. So if I get out of my drawing tool and I look in this part here, right, which is in the year 2000, what did it do, right? Keep only, right? And whenever you see this where there's a lot of space, we can actually get rid of that. 
So just double click on the axis and get rid of this include zero. That way your axis doesn't start at zero. Do this for this one. Okay. So we can see that actually coronavirus had a completely different impact on McDonald's, right? So the stock, it actually went down. So read into it what you will. You'll obviously have to do a lot of analysis behind it, but this at least gives you an idea of the survivability of a lot of companies, right? So let's get rid of that exclusion. All right, bring it back to normal. All right, and then let's have a look at Google. How did Google do? Well, I can already see here that it took a bit of a dive, but it recovered pretty quickly, probably within several months. And if I'm a long-term investor, which I am, I'm not interested about these little things. What I'm interested in is can it recover ultimately? Because I'm interested in you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years of investing, right? Same thing goes for this side. Let's see what's going on here. So we can just do a keep only, All right? Get rid of that include zero. Get rid of this include zero, just to kind of make a little bit better. So you can see that actually even they, even Google was affected during coronavirus. So again, read into it what you will. There's a lot of things that happened during that period, right? There's heaps of articles you can read and all sorts of things. But this is kind of the stuff I do, right? This is the kind of analysis that I'd be interested in. Now, obviously, this is relatively basic. But there's a lot of things you can learn from these patterns, right? Because you can say, well, what happened here, you know? What happened here? Why did um, Google's price go down when the economy was going up? Well, why? So these questions will lead you to further investigation, and then you can, you know, slowly understand how they run their business. The more you understand their business, the more you're willing to invest, etc., and so on and so forth. But as a Tableau exercise, this is something. Uh, data blending is something that will really save you a lot of time. Right, because you can you don't have to worry about how to join it and everything. You just chuck them both in, and the blending will handle um, the join uh, the connections themselves, and you don't really have to worry about you know duplicates and all that kind of stuff so much. Right, so I'll leave it there. If you guys got any questions, again, don't forget to you know just leave me a comment. A lot of the times, I'll make another video based on your comment. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.